All right, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to week 14 as we get toward the end of the semester. And we finally come to a minor keys and minor scales. And uh, your week 14 overview has a little bit of discussion of the various things we're going to be doing. And you learned, hopefully, the major uh, keys, the major scales. But there is a flip side to all that, and it's the minor keys. And basically what we're discussing in terms of when we talk about a piece of music being in a major or minor key, it's kind of a, a like a characteristic color. So for instance, we have major. Bright, light sound, and minor. A little bit of a darker uh, character to that. A lot of times people associate the minor keys with uh, a sad uh, characteristics, mysterious, uh, dark, uh, heavy, serious, things like that. Uh, those would be minor keys. Just to give you an example, um, let me play a little bit of Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday is a piece of music in a major key. Oops. Now, if I change that into a minor key, so you kind of hear the difference there. Same thing if I take a song like a Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells is traditionally in a major key. And now I can pull that, put that in minor. Okay, a little difference in, in character there. So just the way that uh, we have a circle of fists for the major keys, we also have a circle of fists for the minor keys. But here's the thing, it's not a different circle. It's really the same circle. So I'm going to show you something. You see here it says natural, minor scale. Uh, well, what's that all about? Here's the keyboard. And this is a C major scale. Let me get the volume up there. So if we have a piece of music in the key of C, key of C major, we would say that what is happening is that the melody draws primarily from these eight notes. And whatever harmonies are there are based out of that key. Now, where do the minor keys and the minor scales come from? Well, this is where we get to the term what we call relative. The idea of relative, where we say a, a major key and a minor key are relative to each other, we're saying that they are related and they share the same notes. So, for instance, here's a C major scale two octaves. Come back down. Okay, that's C major scale. Now, instead, I'm gonna play those same notes, but instead of starting on C, I'm gonna start on A. and you just heard an A minor scale. So what we would say, since the key of C has no sharps and no flats, we would say the relative minor of C major is A minor, and the key of A minor, just like his partner C major, has no sharps, 
has no flat. So this is an A minor scale. So there's 12 major scales, which means each major scale has a partner that, that it shares the same key signature with, making it relative. So let's look at the chart I have up for you. Look at all those weeks that have gone by. Circle of fifths for the minor keys. I think you'll see this is familiar. We've had this before. Here's our major keys. Key of C has zero flats, zero sharps. Key of G major has one sharp. Key of D major has two sharps, etc., etc. All the way around the circle. This way is sharps. As we move it by five, we add flats. This way is the flat side. As we count up by four, because it says up five, up four, we add the flats. And on the inner circle are the minor keys. Now, traditionally in music theory, uh, major keys are given uppercase letters, minor keys are given lowercase case letters. Here they just use uppercase and everything. But that said, we would say that the key signature of A minor has zero flats and zero sharps. What is, first of all, what is the relative minor of G major? The relative minor of G major is E, which means if a G scale has one sharp, F sharp, the E minor scale will do the same thing, only instead of starting on G, it'll start on E. So for instance, here's a G major scale. Right, one sharp, G major. Now I'll do that same scale, but start on E. See, that you just heard an E minor scale. So if somebody said, Take a look at some music. There's one sharp. What key are we in? You have two options. You're either looking at the key of G major or you're looking at the key of E minor. And the same thing goes around for the rest of the circle. Now, sometimes people will say, well, how do you know where it is? Like, for instance, A is with C, E is with G, B is with D, et cetera, et cetera, on the whole circle. Well, the answer is count up six. If you go to the sixth note of any major scale, you have the relative minor. So look at an F scale. I'm going to play an F scale. An F scale is F to F with one flat. There's an F scale. Okay. Now let's go up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth note of an F scale is D. So that means the relative minor of F major is D minor. Now I'm gonna play the F scale. The F scale has one flap, but I'm gonna start on a D. I can start here or here or anywhere. I can start anywhere, I'll just start here. and you just heard D minor. So if I'm gonna play F major, now D minor. Okay, now a little minor action going there. So back to our chart. Every major key has its relative. So if you were to ask to identify something, like look at a piece of music and say, what key are we in with three flats? Well, you have two choices. You're either in E flat major or you are in C minor, all right? Now sometimes people say, well, how do you know which one? Well, two ways to know. One is you could look at the music and what does the music seem to be telling you? 
does the music seem to be focused on the E flat tonality or is the music focused on the C tonality? All right. Another way you can tell is by listening to it. If it sounds bright and happy, then it's a major. If it's dark, sad, serious, mysterious, it's minor. Let me show you something. Let me see if I can pull this up. Okay, let's see. Is this the original? I want the original. All right, take a look at this. This is Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. If we look at the key signature, we have four sharps. So if you were to say, just look at the key signature, you say, oh, okay, what, what key is this music in? Four sharps. This music is in the key of E major. See? But you also have an option. It's either E major or C sharp minor. So here is a E major scale. Now I'll start on the sixth note. Sixth note of E is C sharp, but I'll start down here. I'm playing a C sharp minor scale. All right, well now, if we have two choices then, what do we got? If we look at, if we actually look at the music, the left hand is playing a C sharp. The right hand is doing this. The right hand is playing a C sharp minor chord in second inversion. The first measure sounds like this. Second measure. So instantly, just from looking at the music, left hand is on a C sharp, right hand is spelling out the three notes of a C sharp minor chord, this music is not in E major of four sharps. It's in C sharp minor with four sharps. And that's how we deal with identifying key signatures. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your tone savvy assignments that I've given you. Let's take a look at what we have for the week in terms of identifying the key signatures. First thing you're gonna do on tone savvy is minor key signature identification. All right, so how does that work? You actually, if you actually have your chart, you should be fine. We'll start with treble. And we're all gonna ask you only minor only minor keys. Yeah, let's take out the wonky. Okay. Let's take this out. All right. One, two, three, four, five. We have five sharps. Well, if we look at our chart, five sharps. There's three, there we go, there's five sharps. Five sharps is the key of B major. It's not C flat, C flat is seven flats. Five sharps is B major. So you could say, oh, it's, it, it's B. It's B. Just plain old B. Oh, what did I do wrong? B is for B major. We want the minor. Oh, okay. So that means we go back over here, check it out. What's our chart say? The relative of B major is 
G sharp minor. See, not A flat. The A flat is hooked up with C flat. Relative of B major is G sharp minor. So your answer is G sharp minor has all that stuff. G sharp. One sharp. What does our chart show us? One sharp says it's G major, but the relative is E minor. So you can see how these are. It's not E flat, it's not E sharp, it's just plain old, plain old E. Two sharps. One, two, that's D major, but it's B minor. B, not flat, not sharp, just plain old B. One more. One, two, three, four. We just did this with the Beethoven. Four sharps. Yes, it's C major, but we want minor. C sharp minor. C sharp. Okay. And that's how we do the key signature identification, treble and bass. The other thing I've got going with your assignments is... And some people think this is tricky, but it's really not. It is natural minor scale building. <clears throat> you guys make the scales. So for instance, <clears throat> excuse me. We did this a few weeks ago when you built major scales. Now we're going to build minor scales. Picking out the weird ones. And you're only going to build what we call the natural minor. The plain old, it's the same, going to be the same notes that come out of the um, original major key. Right, watch this. We're going to build an E flat natural minor. Okay, well, what we got to do, first of all, look at your chart. What, what does E flat minor need? E flat minor needs, let's look at the chart. So let's find E flat. Now, a lot of students will do this. It needs three flats. This is E flat major. We want E flat minor. All right, where's E flat minor? The minor is the inner circle. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where, do we see it anywhere? Ah, it's right there. See, E flat minor. E flat minor will have the same notes as G flat major. So it needs a B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. It needs to have those six flats. So you're going to start on E flat, and as you go up, Put those flats in. So let's see. Well, we got the E flat. The next note after E is F. Should it be an F flat? Is there anything there that says F flat? B, E, A, D, G, C. Nope, nothing there that says F flat, so it's just an F. E flat, F. Now what's the next note? The next letter is G. Is it G regular or something done to it? It looks like we need to have the G flat. Well, sure, it's right there. So we need a G flat. Now what's the next one? The next letter is A. Anything need to be done to A? Yeah, it's flat. See, it's right there. First of all, if you want, you can he hear what you have. If you want, you can hear the whole thing. You just heard an E flat natural minor scale. Okay, next one, next letter is B. Does anything have to be done to B? Yeah, it's a flat. Okay, next letter is C. Does anything have to be done to C? B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. Yep, C's flat. So that, that, that there's a lot of flats there. 
Next one is a D. Anything done to D's? Yep, flat. Okay, so we basically have our six flats. See, E flat minor has six flats. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. That's what's here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, E flat's gonna go here, but E flat and E flat are the same. There's your six flats. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat. So let's put our last guy in there. Actually, let's listen to this. And the last note. Now, if you're confused on these things, you're more than welcome to just go ahead and do that. Oh, okay. Why does the B natural minor have these two sharps? Because, where's B minor? Right there. It needs the same notes, same key signature as D major. Bam, bam, F sharp, C sharp, which is why that has an F sharp, C sharp. Want to hear it? It's a B natural minor scale. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, E natural minor. E natural minor only needs one sharp. Go E to E, just put an F sharp in there. All right, the rest should, that's it. And you wanna hear the whole thing? And our last note. Okay, so that's how we, we scale build. We'll be doing scale building in the treble and the bass clef. Now, as far as the minor key stuff, what else do I have for you there? When we listen to a minor chord, you guys already kind of get, know the idea of, of the minor chord. You hear, you still hear a one, a three, five. Oh, by the way, here's a, here's a chart I made you for the minor scales. See, a minor scale only uses the, the key signature of, of, of no flats, no sharps. The G minor scale uses the same as B flat major, and the F minor uses the same as A flat. So just give, give you more examples here in case you need to look at it. All right, so when we look at a, a chord, here's C minor. That's one, three, five, three, whoops, three, one, so we send a C minor chord, C's the root, E flat's the third, the fifth is G. Let's do another minor chord, F minor. F's the root, A flat's the third, C's the fifth. How about E flat minor? And an E flat minor chord, E flat's the root, G flat's the third, B flat's the fifth. So what I've asked you to do on the tone savvy is to recognize those tones of a minor chord. So for instance, I'll show you where it is. Tone savvy interval identification of a minor triad. All right, let's see what that's like. You're doing this by ear. I want to see if you can hear the minor third, perfect fifth, and the octave because you know you still have the. Uh... That's one, three, five, eight. All right. All right, so let's listen to it. What do you think that is? You're either hearing that minor third, a fifth, the Star Wars, or the big octave. 
pop, pop. That sounds like the octave, one eight. Da da da. Da 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 da. Okay, that's definitely not Star Wars. It's definitely not a big octave. That's your minor third. Ba ba. Ba ba. Do you hear Star Wars? Star Wars. So this is making sure you can hear the notes that will build a, a minor chord. Then I've given you major minor scale ear training. Can you hear the difference? Can you hear the difference between a major scale and a minor scale? Let's see. <coughs> Uh, let's see, where is it? All right. Can you hear the difference between the major scale and a natural minor scale? I think that's either major or it's minor. Hopefully you can hear that that's the obvious minor. You should be able to fly through these. Do you hear the standard do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do? If you aren't sure, listen to one, two, three. Definitely went one, two, three, one, two, three, not one, two, three, but one, two, three. So we definitely got the major third in there. You hear it? And practice, 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 because this will work on your ears. Um, you also, this week, for this stuff, have reading. These chapters, 157 to 159, and then 169, so I'll show you the chapters. You'll have even more to help you with. Minor scales and keys. Okay, just to start reading some of this. Here's our natural minor we just talked about. You know, you can hear some stuff, and you don't have to obviously do these exercises, but there is reading. We will be getting into this harmonic minor, but I wouldn't worry about it right now. Uh, that'll be next week. Um, and then, let's see. I want to make sure I've covered everything for the minor scales. Oh, well, since I'm here, you got a quiz this week on all your different uh, – chords and being able to put them in roots and inversions so that is happening up this week and let's see i think for right now that is it for the minor keys the second video this week will be on interval inversions okay and the magic nine but that's the second video all right guys uh, continue your good work talk to you later